Day 137. In the Kharkiv region, the Russians for the most part engaged their artillery. Their main focus became the Kharkiv line, because here the Russians shelled the settlements along their most recent line of attack, including the city of Kharkiv itself. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine also reported that the Russians launched several rockets from the Belgorod region, including cruise missiles Iskander, all of which targeted the city of Kharkiv. In the story Saltiv direction, the Ukrainians have also been dealing with airstrikes and responded by targeting Russian positions in Pripilka and on the other bank of the river in front of Verkhny Saltiv. No fights on the ground have been reported here today. In the east, the most significant fights continue to take place. In the Slovensk direction, there are a few important updates. First of all, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine indirectly confirmed that the Ukrainian defense line still goes through Mazanivka, by saying that a recently launched attack from Dovhenka in that direction was repelled. On the other hand, the Ukrainian sources started to report that the Ukrainian control over Bohorodichne shrank significantly over time, meaning that the Ukrainians are only controlling a small area in the eastern part of the village. There was also an update about the village of Sidorve. If previously the Russians claimed that they fully control this village and are preparing to attack Mayaki, then now the Russians are considering this town as a grey zone, which means that as a result of the fights that have been taking place to the south of this village, the Russians have been pushed out of this village. It is possible that the village itself was reduced to ruins and the Russians decided to pull back. In any case, it will be notably harder for the Russians to launch an attack on the village of Mayaki. Apart from the territorial updates, there were also reports of fighting taking place in Krasnopilne. The Russians carried out a combat reconnaissance operation with an assault group, but had no success. In the Sivers direction, the attack on Sivers continues. The Russians shelled Ukrainian fortified positions in between the settlements around Siversk, while the Ukrainians targeted the Russian positions in Yampil and the forestal area on the other bank of the river. The Ukrainians are anticipating that the Russians will try to cross the river, therefore try to focus a lot on detecting and attacking the areas of concentration of the Russian forces. When it comes to the frontline changes, yesterday the Luhansk People's Republic Deputy Interior Minister claimed that the Russian forces captured Hryhoryevka. However, this information has not been widely confirmed. During the last attack, the Ukrainians again applied their new tactic and let the Russians get inside the target. After the Russians entered the village, the Ukrainian forces launched a counterattack from the forestal area nearby. It was a heavy fight and the results are unclear. The Ukrainian sources report that the counterattack was successful and that the Russians suffered huge losses, while the Russian sources also reported that their operation was successful and that they managed to take the village. It is highly likely that they defined success differently, so we will see a bit later what is actually happening here. In Verkhnokamyanska and Ivanodarivka, the Ukrainians are successfully holding the defense line, especially in Verkhnokamyanska. The location of this village and its connection to Siversk creates very good conditions for defense, so the Russians here struggle a lot and suffer heavy losses in trying to gain more ground. In the Bakhmut direction, today only shelling was recorded. However, it seems like the Russians retained their position in Vesela Dolina. It is not too far from their new base in Klinova, but their ability to provide good cover is also not that good. The situation here is very unstable and fierce fights are going to take place here very soon. The Russians need to establish control over Zaitseva and Kodema in order to ensure success of their offensive operation on Bakhmut. These two villages are absolutely vital, but that is why they have also been so much reinforced by the Ukrainians. Taking Vesela Dolina was a very dangerous move by the Russians as they put themselves in a pocket. The counterattack from the Ukrainians is definitely coming, unless the Russians decide to withdraw. If you are against this war and want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols. You should also know that all products are shipped for free, and on top of that, you can get a 10% discount by using the code STOPWAR. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.